to talk cars, have a little fun, serious talk, and a ton of passion with Steve, Felicia, and the rest of the gang here on Drive Friendly. Good afternoon, good morning, bienvenuto, and welcome to another week of Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. I'm excited. Got a lot of things going on this week, but you're here at, uh, you're on YouTube and Facebook and 1580 The Fanatic. And also Money Radio now. So how about that? I'm We're very expanding excited. I'm excited. our reach. We're all over the globe. Hello, now. Money Radio. Here we come. Yes, we're very, very excited about that. So welcome to the show. Felicia, who who do we have on the show today? We have a very well published, very well known children's author who also wrote recently wrote a book for us mere mortal adults who just want to make our lives a little more joyful. Braha Getz. Did I say that right? Yes, great job. Okay. I spent detected some. Ugh, so she's got, we, we were talking um, before the show and she's going to come on a little bit. She's got some great tips for women who want to get their men off the couch, which means that every man probably just turned the radio off. But for those of you who want to learn how to have some fun in life while not being a like behind us couch potato and find out about how you write 40 children's books, which is amazing. So we'll be talking to her in a little bit. I don't. I, I object to this couch potato thing. It's <laughs> called my day of rest, and I want to watch football and TV. Uh, football? No, no, no. Speaking uh, uh, football, of which, football does not count for being a couch potato. That was that. All bets are off on Sunday. You could sit on the couch all day long. That's the, fine with me. The Jets. I'm not going to say they don't won this say. week because they, they didn't lose. win. They just didn't lose this week. The Titans lost the game. So there was if you watched the highlights, you watched the two good passes that, that the Jets uh, had the same record as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. That's pretty well, no, awful the, for the Steelers. The Steelers, yeah. Did terrible. you hear what he said? The, <gasps> the, the announcer, they're yeah. playing they're, they're playing the Packers and Roethlisberger threw another incompletion. He didn't look and good. he goes, uh, the, the announcer goes, Roethlisberger's looking kind of old. <laughs> it's I awful. mean it, and then they showed a picture of of Roethlisberger's face just like kind of looked like <laughs> Wayne Fonts back in the seventies in Detroit. Terrible, terrible game. But um, yeah, the Jets won big deal. So now it's a four. It's a three way tie for sec or last place basically in the AFC East. Buffalo being up on top, and Buffalo's really killing it. Green Bay's really killing. I know a lot of Packer backers out here in the Valley, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers is doing it again. Every time you think he's finished. He rises again. He's and like, Herbert for the for the Chargers won. That was a great game. Hey, I'm sorry. he's my quarterback for my fantasy team. I am so excited. And he's this awesome. is and this is not to be believed. The only unbeaten team in the NFL is the the Phoenix Our Cardinals. Our very home team, the Cardinals. Well, they're not my home team. Well, so we the live Jets here, are so home, they are. When so. we come home. And we go to a stadium. The closest one is the Cardinals. Yes. So they're our home team. Yes, they're our home team. Very exciting. Murray is unbelievable quarterback. This guy, yeah. you know, it, him and, and Mahomes are almost identical, you know. And Mahomes didn't have such a good game the other day. He's, he's, he's looking a, old. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll what's he, fine. like 24? So he's let's looking old already. let's talk about some car things that are going on. Well, the Snowbirds are back. Welcome back to uh, Arizona. A lot of people are in early this year, so we're seeing a lot of Minnesota and Wisconsin and all the show, Illinois plates coming in this Our week. Are Canadian friends? Not yet. Ugh. I haven't had one Canadian, eh? I have not have one, but they'll be coming in soon. But this brings to a point of something that we're dealing with this week um, is rust. A lot of people who have uh, brought cars down from the Midwest or from the Northeast or even the Northwest, we deal with the, these cars get rusty and then they bring them down to leave them here and they use them for six months out of the year. The thing is, rust never sleeps. That Who sang that like song? A great song? Neil Young. But it's the truth. Once the rust starts, even if you move to a dry climate like uh, Arizona, there's nothing you can do about it. Today we had rust uh, is like car cancer. It exactly is car cancer, and we we had a, a very nice woman come in. She brought her car in just for a simple bearing, and we literally couldn't get the car apart. So we had to replace a whole suspension piece. And neither of us were prepared for it. She wasn't prepared for the extra money, and we weren't prepared for the extra time because we're, we're pretty busy right now. But um, if you are bringing a car down from the Midwest and you want it to be your new winter car, there are certain things you're going to have to deal with. First, rust doesn't stop. It, it just doesn't. And 
you really want to have the car checked by your mechanic in Wisconsin or Minnesota before you bring it down here so they can give you an idea, say, hey, you may want to sell this car and pick up an Arizona rust-free car that you can leave down here for the next 10 years. And what we're finding is cars that are left down here, especially this last year and a half, these people are just starting their cars over after a year and a half of not being here, that the rust has just deteriorated things like brakes, mufflers. We did our first muffler today in six years. Now, back in New York, we do mufflers literally four or five a day. Here was the first one we've done because mufflers don't rust out. So rust is a big factor. You want to have those cars checked before you come to the valley. And when you come to the valley, you decide you're bringing it anyway. Don't be surprised when you go to trade that car in. It's not going to be worth as much as you think it is because of the rust that's going on. We had a Subaru come in, a car from Colorado. I mean, everybody owns a Subaru in Colorado, just like Vermont and Maine, where we come from. And this car is a total disaster, total rust bucket. I thought Subarus were supposed to be like the best car in the world. They are great like, cars, but the like car you never have to buy another one. No, like, there's no such not. there's no there's no such <laughs> car like that. If there was, we wouldn't have a repair shop. So you know that's a, that's that's kind of a bad thing. But the um, the he didn't realize the car drove fine, and he, he brought it down here, and we put it up on the lift, and we showed him everything, and the, literally the car is completely rotted out. So when he was in Colorado, he never hosed off the bottom of it after a snowstorm. He didn't keep it in the garage. He kept it outside all the time. So these are things to consider. But even the ones that are garaged, and these people have heated garage, unless you're hosing off all that salt and everything, it's still going to rust anyway. So have a check before you come down. And if you decide to come down, it needs a lot of work. You may want to consider getting rid of it. But remember, anybody, any smart mechanic or dealership, wherever you go to trade it in, you know, they're going to car fax it and they're going to see it's from a Midwestern state and it's going to reduce the value of the car by easy 50%. No, no kidding. So speaking of new, of used cars and new cars, anything new on the used car, new car front? There are, are no getting cars. getting any easier to buy? No, it's, it's literally impossible. And, and what's happening is cars that were a year ago, worth three and four thousand dollars. Now that people are asking six and seven thousand dollars, yeah, pretty much the cars turned into the housing market. There's nothing out there. There's mm -hmm. nothing out there to buy. One of our, one of our, uh, the guy who has the show, Steve, who has a show after us. I'll have the information when his show is on. He just went to buy a car and he paid a few thousand dollars more for a car that that would have been last year and it ended up needing brakes and some other work. And he probably wouldn't have had to do that a year ago. They probably would have done these repairs beforehand, but now nobody has to, as long as you have a car for sale, you can name your price and people are you buying know, it. You know, this is, makes <coughs> me, I heard something on the news the other day, and this is kind of making me wonder what's going to happen. People who are trying to buy new cars are now buying them online, just getting on lists to get yeah. cars. So they're not going to the dealer. They're not trying the car out. They're not meeting the dealer. They're not doing deals. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that once people get used to doing things online, they start to get used to doing things online for good. Oh, well, the Carvana model is great. You get a, you pick a car out online. They deliver it to you. You drive it for seven days. You like it. Great. You keep it. You don't like it. Send it back. They'll pick it up. What it's do you a, think it's this a great is model. Do to the dealer? I think the the days of the Main Street used car dealers is going to definitely be on the decline. A lot of them, you know, there's always that slick used car guy thing. You know, people are always afraid to go to there because, you know, remember what Gabby went through with, with her yeah, car. Yeah. I think but he, yeah, yeah. they're going to go the way of realtors, just like in your business. Why do you need somebody to buy this car? I can just buy it myself and, and get it from somebody reputable. I have, uh, you know, a complete Carfax. They go through the whole car and Carvana, you know, CarMax, places like that. Um, they do a pretty good job of going through the cars. I'm not going to say they're perfect because they're not, but you can buy a warranty. You can do the financing. I mean, you don't have to leave your couch like Mr. Couch Potato behind me. <laughs> you, you, you can do this. It's not a good thing. It is. It's kind of a weird picture there, Philippe. Oh, there yeah, I know. I wouldn't want to say anything. That's I was a, going to mention it at the break. That's, I've that's, been sitting here for about 20 minutes trying not that, to crack those up. Are, those are two feet behind me. <laughs> yeah, that's not okay. what it looked like for the first eight minutes. I know. And I I'm know. just having a really hard time dealing with it. Yeah, this. I know. So, so before you just need to move a little closer I know, to me. I know. Wait, I'm like, sit right there. Perfect. There you go. No, they're not. The so way. I want to okay. talk about if something you, cool. If you can see us, you know what's going on. And if you can't, you should be watching us. I'm excited. Will you please stop moving? So, um... Anyway, so something exciting is happening within our drive-friendly audience. As you know, Ed White, one of the, one of these wise-ass guys, um, 
Who <laughs> just, you got to move this thing. I have something in, it's like a Q-tip. It's not a Q-tip. But, um. Ed White, who uh, is a chef. I love a Q-tip. I'd like to see that ear. <laughs> Maybe the Jets are winning. Can we move on, please? I'm sorry, I'll stop. So anyway, Ed White, who used to work for Venture Out as a uh, chef, uh, he decided to open up his own restaurant, and it's called By the Bucket. And what do they sell at By the Bucket? Nothing but meatballs and spaghetti. I love it's, it. It's the I most incredible thing. When is thing. he opening? I got He's go. opening. He's looking for November 1st. He's going to be on the corner, the south corner of Cooper and Warner right there in uh, Gilbert. and That's an amazing location. And what's great about By the Bucket is they only sell meatballs and spaghetti. You can buy a large bucket, a medium bucket, a small bucket, a side of garlic bread, some Do sodas. Do they have different kinds of sauce or is it one nope, sauce? Nope, it's one recipe, one thing. And it's you like may say to grandma's house. This exactly. is what you're going to eat. This is what I'm putting in front of you. This is what you're eating. I and like, you'll it. like it. I like it as a business idea. I think it's great because as a business, I mean, you know what your inventory is going to be. But who meatballs? doesn't like spaghetti and meatballs? I don't. Know. I mean, that's. Rahul, you like spaghetti and meatballs? Yes. See, I everybody, love spaghetti it's and universal. Meatballs. So he's going to be opening. It's the only location down here in, in the Mesa Gilbert area. I know there's one in Ahwatukee. And I think the original one started up in like Page or somewhere up north where we never go. Um, but it's great and it's inexpensive. So you could feed a family of four or six people at a reasonable price. It's always prepared. You walk in, you walk or out. Or have leftovers. And, and have leftovers. Or have leftovers if or you're just, just two people. If you have a real nice mechanic and you want to bring him a gift, meatballs and Or if you have or... teenage boys, 16 buckets ought to do the trick. Exactly. And you know what? It, it It's great. And I hope Ed kills it over there because i think it's a great idea and he's a super great well, guy once he starts let's get him on the show why don't we why don't we film from the meatball place and watch us eat meatballs and spaghetti i would do that i would do, I that. Would do that we'll that. try it out but we've so, just invited ourselves for dinner so i think the website is by the bucket.com if not just google by the bucket and you'll see what's going on there and his note his grand opening should be on or around november 1st he's waiting for one last piece of equipment ed we wish you absolutely the best of luck. Like the big, like the big, like a, a what? cheese shaker, maybe? A, a, a big cheese shaker. <laughs> so my friend Steve Walzak is um, in, in Wontoa, Long Island. He's watching now. And he says that the angle behind you looks a little obscene. Steve, we'll be changing <laughs> that. But thank you for pointing that out. Because well, that's something. we've been talking about for that, 10 minutes. That's something I would expect from Steve. Now, Steve and I started in this business 44 years ago together, pumping gas and uh I'm the last dinosaur still doing this. He ran a real, real successful transmission business in Belmore for like a million years. So um, we're almost at the end of this segment, but then we're going to come back with Bracha Getz. And I love the name because it lets me clear my throat at the same time. <laughs> Bracha. Bracha Getz. Now, I'm going to ask you an odd question. You've been asked it before. No relation to Bernie Getz. Probably, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> awesome. This is going to be fun. <laughs> okay. You think you're related. It's possible. Wow, we're gonna we may have to have him on the show as a guest. And then we have to come talk about we also want to talk about the uh the weekly topic, drive friendly, arrive safely. Wait, whatever Bracha wants, Bracha gets. Get it? <laughs> I've, you've heard that a hundred times. Right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, all right, all right. You know, listening to the show with some people of my ABC, Arizona Business Connection, um whatchamacallit, uh networking group. And we had a water drive for the city of Mesa, Mesa Chamber of Commerce, so it's a water drive every year. And they donated 25,000 bottles of water for the water drive. Uh, the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So I want to thank everybody in ABC Networking for their really, really generosity. I mean, we had 25,000 bottles of water. It's like 18,000, um, uh, 18 cases, uh, 18 pallets of water. What what happened to our guest? That's what I'm trying to find out. We, we lost our guest. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to find out. Maybe she didn't like. Maybe Bernie Getz got her. <laughs> Is that possible? I don't know. Just keep talking. Okay. So we did. Okay. okay. So yeah, we got we got um, we got all these um, bottles of water donated, and uh, they were delivered to the shop, and then um, the Mesa, the water drive, they they picked it up, and it was really really. Uh, Good that they did that. And, you know, in the city of Mesa, the, the Chamber of the, the Mesa Chamber of Commerce is a wonderful organization. And if you own a business or you're a um, you're a resident here, you should visit the chamber. There's a real great amount of quality 
people, doctors, lawyers, business people. And you should look to your chamber first when you want to do anything, home improvement, whatever it is, because there's a lot of good people in there and there's people checking on other people. And I think that goes for any town you live in, because I know we have listeners all over all over the place. Yeah. Any town you live in, check out your, you call your chamber when you're looking for somebody, because it, people who tend to be members of chambers tend to be very community minded and they tend to be there for the long haul. And These are not people who are looking for transactions or looking for relationships in the community. They're looking for someone to help them grow their business and they pr- most likely live in your community. So that's where I would start is, is start with your chamber. Whenever you're looking for anything in your house, we have great people. We are in our own, our own little chamber group that, that we talk to all the time. Right. We have naturopaths, we have chiropractors, we have insurance agents, floor cleaners, we have carpet cleaners, car- carpet roofers. cleaners, people, women who do a woman, one woman who does Medicare. I mean, it's all kinds of people. Anyway, uh, to get back on topic, we want to talk about drive friendly, arrive safely. Because yes. This week, the topic is be aware of passenger safety. A lot of times lately, we've been talking about all the things you could do as a driver to be aware of things that are happening outside. But some people are not aware of what's happening in their own car. Oh, yeah. Distracted drivers come from inside the car, not outside the car from, for the most part. They come from kids who are misbehaving, teenagers who are being rowdy, um, to, you know, to people trying to look on their cell phones and text. So this is something that we need to work on is to be aware. If you have children in the back seat, make sure they're put there, make sure they're comfortable and make sure they know that you're driving and you're not going to go fix whatever it is that's the problem. I was next to somebody in a minivan and the kids, they, they had to be like six, seven years old. None of them were strapped in. They're like running between the middle and the back seat. Mom's driving. She got a cup of coffee. Her phone is up on her shoulder like this. And it's just like waiting for it to happen. This, see, I think what a great idea. You know how taxi cabs have that that plastic shield (laughs) to divide the front and the back. Yes. You should have that in minivans. It should be an option. So when the kids are being a real pain in the butt. I don't think they drive in minivans anymore. Isn't it more like SUVs? There's still minivans out there. Yeah. Minivans have kind of gone. Um, SUVs is well, put also, one on there too. And also for parents of teenagers, and I hate to say this because I had, I, they're not teenagers anymore. The question should always be not only who's driving, but how many kids are going to be in the car with you? Yeah. Because it's not the one kid, it's the five kids, the third kid, the second kid, the, the, the ones that they keep playing games. <clears throat> so you have to be careful when you're in the car. So and just sharing a seatbelt is not an option. <laughs> <laughs> the car holds as many seatbelts as you have. Just look at it this way. It's the easiest way to do it. But we've seen it. We, you know, we we drove to First Friday last week, and you know, you see some stuff going on. You got to be careful. But also, what your passengers do. If a passenger's not wearing a seatbelt, and you get pulled over, that's your ticket. You're the driver of the car. If your passenger decides, um, if your passenger decides to flip the bird at somebody. That's your problem, too. If the passenger's smoking weed and you're not and you get pulled over, guess what? That's your problem yeah, as well. Yeah, even though marijuana is legal, smoking while you're driving isn't. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, that, it's not. True. Don't do it. Bad idea. Like Just like alcohol. Don't have an open container. Don't have anything in oh, your Oh, yeah. Car. That's right. If, you have an, if your passenger has an open container, that's your fault also. All right? So be aware of that. Um I, you know, you talked about too many teenagers. Yeah, we've seen four people packed in a three, you know, in a back seat made for three. I mean, you've probably done it. I know I have. But, you know, today's cars are faster. And, you know, where we live, especially, you know, the roads are all straight. So you can go faster. And uh, it, it's definitely a lot more dangerous. So it seems like we're still having trouble getting our guests back on. So I'm going to ask you, Steve, to share with our audience a customer story. Do I have a customer story? A good I, one. I need a minute. A good I, one. I, I I have a story. I know you would. I this, wouldn't even take a minute. It would this take is a good seconds. one. And, and I know Steve's listening because we remember this. We had this customer. <laughs> this is way, way back. I was thinking about this century. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Okay. She, <laughs> Go to she, the last century she and had, then you can do this century. She had a Chevy Vega and she wasn't sure how to check the oil. So in the old Vega, the oil cap was at the top. And she filled the engine oil up until she could see the oil at the top. She probably put, I don't know, four or five gallons of oil in this thing that held four quarts. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was a Chevy Vega. Um, Steve would probably know better than I can, but we've had that. Um, so how's that a good customer story? Well, it was just, it was just funny. They Only if you're oil. a mechanic from like the 1970s. For the rest of us, we're still waiting for the punchline. Well, you're waiting. 
Well, uh, well, you know, I can't be put on the spot like you that. I talk tried. about work all the time. You're filled with stories. You never. I know. I have a million stories. of them, except I can't. You have a million of them. No, I, I, I try. What happened at work today, dear? What happened at work today? <laughs> Let's see. I was, I was yelled at by somebody. Okay, it wasn't very nice. But then, um, you know. Oh wait, this is a good one. I tell a guy, this was yesterday, actually. He brings his car in just for an oil change. We do a full inspection on it like we normally do. And I said, um, you know, it's time for brakes. He's like, that's impossible. I said, you have 90,000 miles on this car. He's like, I don't even use the brakes. <laughs> this is something, I swear to you, my father about 20 years ago when he was still alive said. Actually, that's actually a pretty funny story, too. My father calls me up. He goes... This, I, I want to get the, the, the oil changed. So he drives from Boca Raton to Fort Lauderdale, which is a good 45-minute drive because there's a guy who does oil changes there really cheap. He says to my father, he goes, you need an air filter and you need brakes. Yeah, how much is the air filter? So the guy says, $11. He goes, $11, an air filter is like 50 cents. He goes, and I don't even use my brakes. I never touch my brakes. It's impossible. So my father takes the car, he goes across the street to another gas station repair shop, says, check my brakes. The guy goes, you need brakes. He's like, what? That son of a bitch across the street called you? That, <laughs> forget it. He calls me up. He goes, I don't know. All you guys are all crooks. I'm like, it's your father. <laughs> okay. So my father goes to Sears for a forty nine ninety nine brake inspection. Okay. Now he's paying somebody to, to tell, tell him. him he doesn't need brakes. So he goes, how are my brakes? He goes, they're fine. He takes the piece of paper, drives all the way back to Fort Lauderdale to show mechanic, hey, look, I don't need brakes. Goes across the street, says, hey, you and that son of a bitch, blah, blah, blah. I don't need brakes. Three days later, my father calls me up. He goes, Steve, I got a problem. What's the matter? He goes, every time I step on the brake, they, it's making this grinding noise. I thought you don't use your brake, Pop. What, what are you talking about? So now he goes, what do I do? I said, there's a guy who owns a Sitco station. I happen to know he used to be in New York. I don't go to him. He's really, really expensive. I'm like, good for you. I said, you know, he goes, now he wiped out the brakes. He wiped out the rotor. So my father calls me up. He's like, you know, he wants $50 a rotor. I'm like, that, that, that's what it costs. I mean, that's what it is. And he ended up spending $300 on brakes. And this is like 20, 25 years ago. And if he had gone to the first guy, it was like $79.99. You know, I said, now you should go back to the first and second guys and apologize. No, I'll never go there again. So now he had to find another mechanic who charges $10 <laughs> more for an oil change. Don't shop by price is my point, okay? When you go to pick out a mechanic, uh, an engine, a transmission, whatever it is, don't ask the first thing, how much is it? Because it's the wrong way to do it. If you call up and, and say, I want to know how much is an oil change, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, oil change prices are basically the same everywhere. If you're shopping for 5 or $10 to save, then you need to go somewhere else. Don't shop by price. Shop by warranty. Shop by quality. Shop by who's the mechanics, who's working on the car. Is it some 18-year-old or is it an experienced guy who's working on my car? You know, these are important things to, to you know, worry about. You know, Jiffy Lube, oil change specialist. Then all of a sudden, they're doing tires and brakes. What, overnight they became brake specialists? How did this happen? And and we have plenty of stories of those. We had a guy, oh, I had one today. Guy went somewhere else because his oil change is $5 cheaper than me. He brings it back to me to do other work on his car. <clears throat> the washer for the drain plug is missing. It's leaking oil, drip, drip, drip. I pointed out to him, he goes, that's leftover. I'm like, that's brand new oil. I said, look at the spot on the floor. I said, now you got to go back to the guy to do another crummy oil change. He's like, well, how much would you charge me? I said, I have to change the oil again. I got to take the oil out and all this stuff. So, you, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, I don't have any other stories. I can't I think of one now. I cannot believe you. You, you are endlessly <clears throat> telling me all these things that are going on. It'll come to me during the break. I'm, I'm, I'm basically shy. I'm a shy guy. Now, basically what's been going on to our audience, for those who don't know, is that this past week, Steve has been working at the front counter from, as he likes to put it, bell to bell, because not one but two of our managers happen to be out this two week. Two managers, two mechanics. Are out. And you know what? When things happen, and it's it, when things happen, you got to just get right back into it. So he is bell to bell. All that other stuff, all the other things, all the networking, all the talking to people, the lecturing, right. the coaching, all that other stuff you do has all been put aside. And now you are back. 
where you started, basically. Deal, you, know, you know what? I like dealing with and customers. I, knew you were say I, that. I, I, you know what? I really like the relationship I have with my customers because you know some people bring me coffee, some people bring me food. That hey, Steve, how you doing? And and it's great. This is the part that I love about being in the auto repair business because you develop relationships over time. I mean, back in New York, I had customers for over 30 years. I had three generations. I had the grandparents, the daughters, and then the kids started driving. And you remember them by the cars they drive, not their name. Just the car they drive. Well, that's true. I run into people at Fry's Judy or Chevrolet. Bass's. Well, well, yeah, it, it, it's true. Hey, Sid, the Toyota guy. Yeah. <laughs> How's your water pump I put in two years ago? You'd be surprised. You, you, I remember cars I worked on 100 years ago, and it, it just stays with you. And that's one of the greatest satisfactions of being in this business is when you run into somebody that you know at Home Depot, and they say, hey, Steve, that car is running great. I'm so glad you did a good job. I'm so glad that you know you stood behind it. Or better yet, is when uh, we had a call. A customer moved to Utah like three years ago, and we have a three year, thirty six thousand coast to coast warranty. And an axle we went put in, it went bad. I mean, it happens. And they didn't believe that they'd get warrantied, and they called you know the partners network number up, and it didn't cost them a dime. And they called me up. They actually sent a card. Remember, I brought it home. Yeah, thank thanking you me for that was very nice. they just like they couldn't believe it. They went in expecting to spend like five six hundred dollars, and it didn't cost them a penny because of the nationwide warranty. So that was really cool. Um, well, but, I think uh, when people go to neighborhood places, be it auto repair shops or hair salons or like even the local Ace Hardware, as opposed to going to the Home Depot, mm -hmm. you get more, you get that local feeling, and you get the same people tend to be there over and over and over again. You develop relationships. And that's, I think that's what people in Arizona kind of miss because mm -hmm. we have so many new people coming in that there's so few places that you can go that's not a big box. Yeah. And when you get to, a, whether you, it's a restaurant or a hairstylist or a, 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 an auto mechanic, some local place that you can go to, it feels good. It's like it's like a hometown feeling that you just don't get when you go to Fry's. Yeah, and 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 it, it's true. And when you go to some of these big chain places, let's say you go to you know rhymes with Hydus and you muffler place, and they do a water pump, and then you go to another location thirty miles away because that water pump failed. They're going to try to sell you something else because they're not making money on that warranty job. So, oh, well, your belt tensioner and this and that went bad. And that's why stick to the neighborhood shops. Find a local mechanic. If you don't know where to find a local mechanic, just call me. I'll find great mechanics throughout the United States. I've been in this business 44 years. I know people all over the country. And I can guarantee you I'll find somebody that you like. So run into a problem. Give me a call. I will find a mechanic for and you. And actually, you're selling yourself a little short because the other reason people can call you is if you're interested in being a mechanic oh, or yeah. you have a kid. We actually watched a video today about a girl who wanted to be a mechanic and her mother tried to talk her out of it and she ended up being a great mechanic. Yeah. Like, if you're interested in it, I don't think there's enough people that feel that they can talk to somebody or even understand the career opportunities oh, that yeah. are involved. You know, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, a mechanic's not a mechanic. He's a mechanic, a plumber, a carpenter, an electrician because we can fix, make, build, Whatever. That's what we do. We work with our hands. And um, being an auto mechanic is a great, it's, it's a great career. And now with computerization, I mean, I, I, I'm at the end of my career, but if I had to start at the beginning, boy, it's exciting. You know, cars with lines of code and, and you know, 30, 40 computers in there. And it's, it's just a different world than, than what I started in in 1977. It's, it's really amazing the way cars have become so interactive. I mean, now, What's well, a Kia? You don't even need a key. You can start your car from your phone. You can. You have self parking. Uh, stuff I drive you crazy when you have the automatic steering and braking. I drive on the eight. We when we go to San Diego, I don't even have my hands on the wheel of the I brake. I close my eyes and, and feel close to God. I pull up. <laughs> I that. I pull up to somebody go and the car brakes automatically. It is. And I'm terrified awesome. every time, but we seem to be okay. No, just keep your head down and <laughs> don't worry about it. So. We were talking about car stuff, and now, believe it or not, it's October, and, you know, you got to start thinking about, you know, the snow bowl is opening up soon, and, you know, before you know it, uh, ski season is here. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> in Phoenix? I don't yes. think so. You know, have you traveled an hour north of, of, of Phoenix ever? Um, up north, Flagstaff, it's going to snow in like a month. We get winter outside of the valley, believe it or not. And there's a we few- We live in a bubble. Here, <clears> there's a few nice. weird things in Arizona you can't do. Um you can't buy windshield washer fluid that doesn't freeze because I guess the people 
make meth out of it or something. I don't know, but you can't buy windshield washer fluid that um, does not freeze. You can't buy that antifreeze. So if you decide that you're going to be traveling up towards um, the mountains, up, you know, the globe or any of those kind of places, not globe, you know, page, pace and all of those, you know, it's like 60 degrees colder there, an hour and a half north of us. So make sure your car is winterized because uh, things can freeze. Although we don't get the super cold weather like the Northeast, um, it's still important to have the proper amount of coolant or antifreeze, which is basically the same thing. Because if you're driving along in that cold road, that lower hose, which is the lowest point of the cooling system, can actually freeze, turn to slush, and restrict flow of coolant through the radiator, and the car will actually overheat in the winter. I know it sounds weird, but it's something that can happen. <clears throat> Another thing, check batteries. Summer kills batteries, but winter is where you see the uh, symptoms. So <clears throat> it's not winter that kills a battery. Heat is the biggest killer, but winter, when the oil gets nice and thick and the car is cold, that's when you need the most amount of energy, and that's when you notice when your battery is going bad. Excuse me. <clears throat> Other things you got to do, as the temperature drops, the air in your tires will drop as well. Uh, I forget what it is, one pound per five degrees, something like that. So as the temperature drops, we're getting a lot of people in the last two weeks with their TPMS light on thinking they have a flat. You don't have a flat. The temperature has dropped. What, in the last three weeks? Two weeks ago, it was 105 degrees. And what was it, 77 today? That's so nice. Yeah, it's, and it it's, rained it's today. gorgeous. We had hail today. I mean, that, that was kind of odd. Um, so check the air in your tires and don't forget the spare. All right. And here's another interesting fact. This is a good story that happened today. Customer drives a BMW and uh, she can't find a spare. She's convinced somebody stole the spare tire from a car. The car originally was equipped, originally was equipped with run flat tires, big RFT on the side of the tire. But she replaced the run flat tires with regular tires. She got a flat. AAA came, there's no spare. She's like, why don't I have a spare? Well, you had run flat. I don't have run flat tires on this car. Originally, the car did. So she said, can I buy a spare tire for this car? Unfortunately, you can't. There's, there's, there's no place to put it because they put other components in where the spare would be. I didn't even know that was an option on cars. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no place to mount it. Uh, same thing with, uh, we had a Toyota Sienna. Why would somebody do that? Why? I mean, why would you do that? And because a run flat a tire is like three hundred dollars a tire, and you make you can change it with a regular tire, which is let's say a hundred dollars. But if you say you're gonna have a run flat tire and you don't have room for a spare, that means you have to have a run flat tire forever. Well, the whole point of run flat tires is you can drive on them flat, so therefore technically there's no need for a spare tire. But, okay. So what she do? She threw them away. Well, she bought the car used, and she ah. wasn't aware that the car originally came with it. Well, so she sense. came to us just to replace the tire, and she was asked, can we get a spare? She doesn't have a spare, a jack. She doesn't have the place to now, put the spare in the tools. Now, if you were checking that used car for her, was that something that you would have noticed? Not really. I mean, you're going to look at the condition of the tires. I mean, it's not something that really pops out at you. You wouldn't you know? look to see, is there a spare? Before oh, we'd look to see if there was a spare. Uh, I mean... But would we would we automatically relate it to having run flat? Maybe you know. Well, you uh, will now. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but um, um, problem solved. Yeah, but run flat tires, you know, and we'll talk about that for a bit. Um, the side, you know, the run flat tire. If you've ever had like a shopping cart tire, or 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 a little tricycle, it's got those solid rubber tires on there. Yeah, but there's always one that goes. Yeah, you always get that when you go oh to the market. Oh my god, it, it's like married to ADD. I'm not talking about that. I'm asking about the rubber, solid rubber tire. That's basically what's inside the inflated tire on the car. So the car deflates, and now it's operating on that yeah, but hard that's rubber. The same tire that you get in the supermarket, and they get like. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Wouldn't the same thing happen if it was a tire on a car? It's just a bigger problem? It could, but this is made of a better, higher quality. I'm just using it as an example oh, okay. of a solid tire. I'm just asking tire. the questions that I think people want to know the answer to. And it's not a shopping cart. It's a wagon, okay? If you want to get... I call it a wagon. Anyway, inside You're this inflated tire... You're 150 years old and telling stories from last century. What's the over-under, Phil, on being interrupted <laughs> today? Like 50? So anyway, the, the rubber's inside, and this way, if you get a flat, you're riding on that rubber. You'll get to where you need to go, Don't and then you're your replaced to, um, <laughs> you'll, 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 you'll you, you broke my train of thought. You'll get what I'm going with this. But you, you can't, you shouldn't replace a run flat tire with a regular tire, because let's say you have one top, you know, 
you get a flat and you want to be cheap and not get the correct tire for it, you could have all kinds of handling and braking issues. Remember, brakes stop the wheels, but tires stop the car. So you want to have the proper tire, the proper inflation and, and, and use that. But, uh, Toyota minivans, if you have the Toyota Sienna XLE, even if you want to put a spare, there's no spare mounting thing underneath to put the spare tire on because they don't come with a spare. All right. One of them. force you to buy those tires. It's my, 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 one of my close friends, Sam, he calls me up one day. He goes, I have a flat. I'm like, they're run flats. He goes, well, I shredded it. Where's the damn spare? I'm like, yeah, you don't have one. He's like, why? Because because you have a run flat tire, you can't drive sixty miles on this it. This seems like a terrible idea. The more I'm hearing about this, the more I think I would never buy a run flat tire. So don't. I'm not going to. You don't. Do, I we don't, don't know why anybody don't, would. You it don't be buy a it. It's a service announcement. It's it's a very high end option on for on people who cars. never plan on getting a flat apparently or selling their car. Well, people, if you take care of it, you don't have these well, problems. Well, somebody sold their car and somebody got a shredded flat. So <sighs> there goes your theory. <sighs> okay. Well, let's let's move on from that subject. Speaking of tires, also, um, there's a big tire shortage that's going on right now, and a lot of the tires that are being sold at the stores, because uh, we look at them, um, they're just dis being discontinued. So you may find some specials at certain uh, outlets for tires. Uh, Costco is one of them. When you buy that tire, ask how many more do you have in stock. And is this a discontinued item? We've had a few that bought tires at Costco. Uh, Michelin's, they sell good brands, but that particular model is being discontinued and that's where they were on sale. So then when you have to buy a tire because you have a flat, you won't get the same one. Um, we're seeing Nokian, which is one of my favorite tires. Do you tires. have to have matching tires? It's, it's a good idea because otherwise you'll have two different grips on the tire. Mm -hmm. One new one, one old one. You want to have the same tire. The other thing is to look at the age of the tire. We got four tires delivered today from, uh, actually a customer brought four tires to us to mount today. And the, they were brand new, she just bought them, but the production date was on the side of the tire, said 2616. That means the tire was manufactured the 26th week of 2016. That's five years old. These already. tires are already five years Isn't old. Isn't that like and the life going of, a, on. of a tire is five years old? Generally, when, when they're exposed to the elements, but if you come in for a tire repair, if it's five years old or older, we won't repair it because out here with the high speed limits and the, um, the rubber deterioration, we just, uh, we won't do that. So you want to have young tires. Um, so if you see a date code, let's say, um, five zero two zero, that's the 50th 50th week of 2020 that's acceptable because some tires are real hot movers they move really quickly some particular sizes yeah, but what's are slow happen now with all the shipping and all the, everything's taking forever to get here well that's that's, that's the problem out. a lot of them a lot of a lot of tire companies are discontinuing certain brands because they can't get them some of these have been sitting on cargo ships for six eight months or just in shipping delays and um it, it's become a problem so wherever you buy tires make sure it's a brand that is still going to be around and ask, hey, how many are there in the local and national warehouses? Because anybody can look that up. So if I see our, let's say you come in for tires and you want a certain Goodyear tire, and I only see four in stock and zero national, I'm not going to sell you that tire because down the road, I can almost guarantee you that tire is not going to be produced anymore. Okay. And you're going to have an issue. So um, that, that's that been the tire industry right now. So certain tires that I sold, Nokians and some Duros, I can't get them anymore. And people are coming back to me to for warranties and there's nothing I can do about it. Nobody's, the manufacturers, they're just not selling them in the United States anymore. And- um, Do we have any idea when that's gonna change? It'll, they say it's gonna take about two years for the shipping issues in the United States to uh, get back to normal. Um, the cost of shipping, I mean, I, I, I hate to change subjects, but the cost of shipping a container from China to here has gone up, what do they say, 70%? It's ridiculous. Coca-Cola is now using grain ships to bring product so they can still manufacture Coca-Cola beverage because they can't get it. Costco is getting a getting a whole container ship. They're, they're, they're chartering it themselves just for paper goods and Christmas stuff. This year, Christmas is going to be tough. <coughs> Prices are going through the roof on everything. We can't, oil filters, we can't even get oil filter numbers. I'm buying them as fast as I can. And as fast as we sell them, I can't replenish <coughs> them. And the prices have doubled. Prices have doubled on oil filters in the last couple of weeks. So we're seeing everything go up. 
Oil is going up. Everything's going up. And shipping, I'm waiting for two weeks for an engine just to ship across the United States. They had it at the factory in North Carolina, where we buy it from, just to get it across the United States is taking two weeks. It's zigzagged. It's gone from Wisconsin down to Missoula, wherever. I don't even know where that is. And this morning I got a notification that left El Paso, but it's going somewhere else first before it ends up in Phoenix. Nothing I can do about it. it, it it's crazy. And um, so we're going to be seeing a lot of that with automotive parts. Anything automotive right now is going to be hard to get. Anything computerized. A um, couple of late model GM cars we have for window switches. Can't get it because it's not just a switch. It has chips in there. And as you know, there's a chip shortage <coughs> on everything. So you can't get cars. You can't get parts. You can't get anything electronic. So you know um, what you should do? You should try to fix your house. Okay. That's a that's good, my segue. Good that's segue. my segue. Get me off topic. I, we only have five minutes left, and there's a few things that I wanted to talk about because I think it's really important. Um, you can't. We all know that there's a big housing crunch right now. We all know mm. that it's a huge problem for people wanting to buy a home. There's waiting lists for all the new builders. Uh, it's very hard. There's still multiple offers. The prices are not going up as steeply as quickly. And there aren't as many offers out there. So instead of you're competing with 10 offers, you're competing with five. Instead of going $15,000 over asking price, you're going 5000 But it's still a problem. It's, it's still a problem. And it's going to persist probably until at least <clears throat> the smart money says through 2022, maybe to 2023, 24. Mm -hmm. So you have your house. What are you going to do with it? You're going to fix it up, which is what people have been doing. But there's a couple of things that people are doing that I want to tell them, maybe you shouldn't be doing that because eventually... You're going to want to sell your house because yeah. most because it's usually the average time people st spend the house <clears throat> in Arizona in their this any particular house is five years. Yeah. So there's a few things that I just wanted to warn people, like as you're spending time in your house because you can't move and your house is too big or too small or whatever, and you want to change it around. There's a few things to be wary of. The first thing is if you do any upgrades, find out if you need a permit. Nope. OK, not just permission from your HOA, which, of course, you really should have. And I won't even go into the HOA thing right now because <clears throat> we all know how we all feel about HOAs. But make sure that you need a permit for anything. If you're going to build a pergola, if you're going to put up a shed, if you're going to extend it to an Arizona room, make sure But your town if you need a permit. And this is the reason why. If you don't, when you sell your home, you're either going to have to take it down or you're going to have to go get a permit or you're just not going to get paid for the work you did. Mm -hmm. For example, if you build a two or 300 square foot Arizona room and with things being $200 a square foot, you could do the math and then you don't get a permit for it. When you go to sell it, you can't include that 200 square feet in the sale. The bank won't accept it. A buyer won't accept it. So if you're going to build something bigger, please, please, please get a permit. Hey, can I ask you a question? What, what about a shed? It like really depends on the height of the shed and how far it is from whether you're in an HOA or if you're in a non-HOA. If you're not an HOA, then there's, there might be rules about how close or far it should be from another person's property, mm -hmm. how high something is supposed to be. Some towns have height requirements. Just check it out. Call yeah. your local town, wh wherever you live. Call the town and say, hey, I want to put up a shed. Are there any regulations? Do You know, I want to do this. What's, what's the deal? Not calling doesn't make the problem not there. That's true. Okay? Not knowing doesn't absolve you from the responsibility of having to have done it. I didn't know has never worked when it comes to title problems. Never. I didn't know I needed a permit. Well, you do. And now it's going to uphold, hold up the sale of your house. I didn't know I couldn't have this. Well, now you do when you have to take it down. So that's the one thing I'm going to say. I'll say one more thing and then I'll finish it next week because there's, there's You're a only going to say one more thing. Well, I only have time. It's like only two minutes left. Okay. Um, as much as you want to upgrade your house, make sure the upgrades make sense. Don't upgrade your three bedroom, two bathroom, little 1300 square foot house as though it was a mansion in Scottsdale with gold toilets and marble ceiling, marble floors, and, you know, very high end granite because you're just never going to get your money back. Mm -hmm. You're just, it's, it's going to be overdone. And first of all, you may have trouble selling it because it's going to look overdone and not appropriate to the style of your home, but you're also going to be spending an inordinate amount of money on very expensive items that you can't take with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can't take upgraded hardware with you. You can't take, I mean, sometimes you can take light fixtures with you, but sometimes you can't window treatments. Sometimes you can't, it really depends. So think about keeping your upgrades to within the stratosphere of your house, so to speak. Yeah. Um, otherwise you're going to have some, some very expensive items 
that are, are not going to show well and you're not going to be able to ever get your money back. For. You know, one thing I noticed on some houses that you've sold over the years, the houses that like one bedroom is dark purple, another one is bright yellow. Should those be painted like a neutral color you before you put one, that? You can have one crazy color room in any house. Mm -hmm. Once you get two, people get turned off. One room, uh, any good realtor or any sensible buyer is going to say, I can deal with it with a coat of paint. Two rooms, now you got a project. Now you're yeah, hiring a painter. That's true. So just, you know, try not to do the dark colors. Try to, you know, Neutral. use wall coverings if you have to. Yeah, wallpaper's back now. Well, that's, no, that's... no, God, no, please. I don't Jeez. even talk about wallpaper. Okay. You can never get wallpaper off. All righty. All right. So anyway. Just my um, own personal feelings about when selling a house. I've sold a house where the kitchen was wallpapered. Don't want to go through that again. Okay. Remember, we bought this house. It was carpeting in the kitchen. It was ridiculous, too. So anyway, we want to thank all of our listeners for listening and watching us here on YouTube and Facebook, here on Money Radio and Sports Radio, CBS Sports Radio. And remember, we've got some great football games coming up this weekend. The Jets are going to play in London, they're playing the Atlanta Falcons, so that should be a pretty pathetic game to watch at 9.30. Which means the they'll have the rest of the Sunday to enjoy football. There you go. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. We always appreciate it. Remember, you can visit us on the web at drivefriendlyaz.com, and we will see you all next week. And remember, drive friendly and arrive safely. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. Visit drivefriendlyaz.com for live shows, past shows, and more about our host and guests.